Hi, and welcome to the latest in the series of us to you consulting podcasts. My name is Rachel Blackburn and I'm founder and director of UK-based international management consultancy, us to you consulting Limited. Really pleased that today we're going to be exploring the topic of gender equality in the workplace with Jess Connolly. Jess here is our latest intern and Jess has been doing some research around this topic. Jess has been with us for several weeks now. She's just completing her business and management degree at the University of East Anglia. So welcome Jess. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to talk about this topic. Excellent. So I guess before we get into the detail of the subject matter, I guess a good place to start might be to understand how you actually planned and prepared for this particular project. So in order to structure my thought process and how to research and implement an important topic for me, for this podcast, I use us to use consulting project management guide booklet. I went through this and from reading that whole document, I decided um, producing a work breakdown structure would probably be the best fit for me. Um, so this structure would enable me to construct my project into four phases. So these are research, planning, execution and review. Um, this would overall aid me with a tool which is a step-by-step -step guide on how to complete my project um, with what I need to research, how I execute it and also integrating the scope and deliver deliverables of the project as well. Yeah, that's really good. And have you got your work breakdown structure? Yes. Here? Yeah. Excellent. So uh, yeah, the work breakdown structure always useful uh, to make sure you've actually got that thorough plan. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that's great. So. Having looked at that, I guess the next question is uh, what actually is gender equality inequality? So gender inequality is basically the discrimination on the basis of sex or gender, um, causing one sex or gender to be routinely privileged or prioritised over another. Okay, and, um, and I guess if we're in the UK thinking about gender these days in 2023, I guess one of the things I have to consider is there are numerous genders, so for your research how did you focus? Mm -hmm. So for the purpose of this study, the two genders I research, um, I also did an interview as well, would be female and male. Those are the only two genders I'll be using. Brilliant. Just to kind of be clear about the scope of the project, that's fine. Mm -hmm. And um, how does gender inequality affect the working environment based on your research? So I would say the issue that affects the work environment in all types of work, um, one is personally with the employees, um, and two is probably affecting the organisation and its image as a whole. Um, so to start with, if an employee feels discriminated um, because of their gender, um, it's therefore obviously brought to the attention of the manager. Um, regardless of how big or small the organisation is, this can straight away damage the organisation's reputation. Um, this can also lead to a damaged brand image, um, potentially increasing labour turnover and a decrease in demand for the company. Um, with regards to employees themselves, um, I would say sexist, expectations and behaviours within the workplace have been shown to affect employees negatively with a sense of belonging, mental health and job satisfaction. When employees feel that a sexist behaviour and practices persist in spite of efforts um, to build an inclusive workplace, organisations can be accused of gender washing. Um, gender washing is basically what makes an organisation seem more female friendly than they really are. Okay, so gender washing, so that's another another term to add to um, our vocabulary, I suppose, things to be aware of then, look out for. And what issues would you say have been a consequence of um, inequality within the workplace when it comes to the gender framework? Um, so one, I, one of the most well-known issues, I would say, is the gender pay gap. Um, the gender pay gap is basically an equality measure that shows difference in the average earnings between a man and a woman. Um, in the UK's case, the difference between men and women's average hourly pay in 2022 was 5.4%. Um, in monetary terms, the mean difference in ordinary pay in 2022 was £1.44 compared to £1.48 in 2021. Um, obviously, there shouldn't be any monetary gap at all when fracturing the gender of an employee. Um, when I carried out my own primary research, interviewing five females and five males, um, all that have worked in their jobs in their lifetimes, they all agreed that females are disadvantaged compared to males with regards to pay in certain sectors and job roles. Really interesting points there, Jess. And um, yeah, and moving on to promotion, what are the solutions and thoughts there? Um, so regard with promotion, it's obviously linked to the gender pay gap as well, but promotion disparities is a massive issue in today's society. So a disparity is basically, it can be defined 
as a lack of equality or similarity, especially in a way that's not fair. Um, so a promotion disparity is basically inequality of employees getting promoted or not promoted due to unfair circumstances based on their gender. Many businesses are unconsciously biased towards males um, when it comes to getting promoted, receiving a bonus or enjoying a salary uplift. When carrying out my interview for my primary research, I asked five males and five females if they thought males are more likely chance of getting promoted rather than females. Um, four males and four females said yes, one male and one female said no. Oh, okay, so it's not sort of a complete consistent picture across the board, but certainly there's still mm. that concern whether it's conscious or unconscious bias. Definitely. is something that businesses might need to actually consider. Mm -hmm, definitely. And what about harassment? Yeah, so one major issue in business, all businesses today is sexual harassment. Sexual harassment at work can include verbal or written comments um, of a sexual nature, including remarks about an employee's appearance, for example, um, questions about their sex life, offensive jokes, um, email and social media messaging, um, content like that around sexual harassment. Um, additionally, sexual harassment is not limited to the opposite sex. So men can harass men, women can also harass women. So there's no category. So there's some key points around um, harassment that we need to be mindful of mm. and thinking about whether they're occurring, whether they're likely to occur, whether there's risks in different organisations. Um, However, what sort of solutions are already in place? Um, so one major legislation is the Equality Act 2010 in the UK. Um, so this protects employees, workers, contractors and self-employed people, uh, job applicants, etc. Um, so this protects you against discrimination in the workplace at all stages of employment. Um, so this includes recruitment, employment terms and conditions, training, pay benefits, promotion and transfer opportunities, dismissal or redundancy. However, when carrying out my interview, I also asked the question of, do you think more legislation around the topic of gender inequality in the workplace would help tackle the issue? All participants said yes, um, there should be more legislation put in place, um, specifically for sexual harassment, like we just talked about. Um, even though there are laws in place to protect these employees against discrimination, um, employers must do all they can reasonable to protect their staff from sexual harassment and take steps to prevent it within their working environment. Oh, okay, so generally speaking, your research has shown that um, there's more work to be done in some cases. Mm, definitely. So, um, uh, good. So, as we look forward then, what solutions do you suggest that employers may consider to improve on some of the issues you've mentioned already? Yeah, so first off, I started with um, doing my interview. Um, I interviewed and I said, um, asked them if they believe enough solutions are implemented to tackle the issues of gender equality in today's workplace. Um, they all said no, so five females, five males, all said no, there wasn't enough um, put in place. Um, unfortunately, there are many companies that approach the development of gender inequality in the wrong direction or are simply unsure of how to go about it. Um, if you want a company culture that celebrates and embraces true gender inequality, um, then you need to hire employees that have core values consistent with this value. Um, establishing an inclusive culture aligned with the company values can set clear expectations on how everyone in the workplace should behave, um, norming employee behaviour to support gender inequality. So in terms of uh, looking forward regarding promotion disparities that you've mentioned, what are the key bits of advice you'd give to employers there? So with regards to um, promotion disparities, um, it's really important to ensure that your business isn't unconsciously biased um, towards the employees. Um, starting with the criteria for receiving promotions and benefits, um, making sure it's consciously and unambiguous, um, would leave, make sure there's no confusion there. Okay, so with regards to um, men specifically, um, encouraging them to take parental leave, um, be supportive in terms of how much time they need with their newborn baby. This can also allow their partner um, to go to work as well. This will encourage flexible working, um, giving men and women the opportunity to handle childcare responsibilities, making sure to maintain a career and income. Oh, okay, some really uh, yeah, critical things at this point of time in the economy. And, um, and what about gender pay? Um, so regarding gender pay, um, employees can put in a variety of policies and actions to overcome this part of gender inequality. So to start with is being transparent over pay. So this is already in the pay secrecy clause in the Equality Act 2010. Um, also being open about how your organisation determines pay 
um, the benefit structures for staff and the formula you use for calculating salary increases. Um, carrying out mark, uh, research into market rates as well to ensure sal salaries are fair. Oh, okay, so some really practical things to consider there. And what about sexual harassment? Yeah, so specifically with sexual harassment, with the laws put in place in the Equality Act, um, there are several steps employers can take to prevent sexual harassment um, and create a safe environment for female and male employees. So this thing could include training everyone um, who works for you, recognising sexual harassment and encouraging them to report it. Um, also, the policies need to be consistent, um, having a zero tolerance for sexual harassment. Um, and finally, offering support to anyone involved in a sexual harassment complaint. Okay, yeah, that's really good points there. So in summary, how would you wrap up the, uh, the conclusions from your investigations here? Um, so basically, to summarise, one of my final questions in my interview for my participants was, do you think our society is doing enough to create a fair and equal environment um, for females and males within the workplace? Um, all five males and all five females answered no. Um, therefore, it's clear various solutions need to be implemented to tackle the issue of gender equality within the workplace. Um, as well as legislation, um, employees also have a huge responsibility um, to make sure the environment they're producing for their employees is unbiased and fair and equal with the organisation they are running. Brilliant. So, um, so some really interesting points there, thought-provoking points there um, for us to consider what's going well, what's not going so well in our different organisations. That's great. And just to wrap up then, um, Jess will be putting some of her comments and results of her research onto a downloadable document onto our website. So if you'd like to download your own copy, then uh, please feel free to do so at usgconsulting.com. Also get in touch if you've got any other comments, um, thoughts, anything else you'd like us to help you with as you develop this all-inclusive culture within your organisation.